Welcome back, gang. We're talking about 3D vectors, and we're talking about directional cosines today. 3D vectors, okay? And, and if you remember from our series, what we're doing is we're going over ways that I can have 3D vectors expressed and how to break those 3D vectors into I, J, and K components. That's all we're doing, okay? We already talked about way number one. And way number one was with blue triangle equations, right? Okay, let's go check out the last two videos, see where that came from. Number two, number two is this guy, directional cosines. Okay, now in the last video, we looked at how to do directional, I mean, uh, blue triangle equations, and it used two angles, okay? This right here was with two angles, right? And that was phi and theta z, all right? Directional cosines is with all three angles, and that would be theta x, theta y, and theta z, all right? Now, just like up here, theta z, was the angle between the positive z and the vector f. This is no different, okay? No difference. So, theta x is the angle between, guess what? Positive x and vector f. Theta y, angle between positive y and vector f. And theta z is the angle between positive z and vector f. As a matter of fact, this theta z is exactly the same theta z as it was in the blue triangle equations, okay? So, what do I have here? A little bit different method. I'm going to have some new equations. The directional cosine equations. Guess what? They have cosine in them, and they go like this. Cosine of theta x is equal to fx over f. Cosine of theta y is equal to fy over f. And cosine of theta z is equal to fz over f. Okay? Now, we can rearrange those equations, and it could be like this, right? Just move move the f over to the other side, so fx is equal to f cosine theta x, fy is equal to f cos theta y, and fz is equal to f cos theta z. Now one more thing you ought to know about here is this. If you're, if you're reading the Hibbler book, okay, I like theta x, theta y, and theta z because they're very descriptive, right? The theta x is between the x and the vector. Theta y is between the y and the vector. Theta z is between the z and the vector. But would Hibbler use that in his book? No, that's way too complicated. So let's use something like this. He calls this guy alpha. He calls this guy beta. And he calls this guy gamma, okay? So if you have your secret decoder ring, anytime you see alpha in the book, just think, oh, that's just theta x, right? What's the first three letters of the Greek alphabet? Alpha, beta, gamma, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, right? This alpha is theta x, beta is theta y, gamma, theta z. And you'll see that in the book, but don't be afraid. I like theta x, y, and z. I think it's much more descriptive, and it's easier to tell students, like, where's that angle go, okay? So these right here are your directional cosine equations. Now notice FZ. That's the exact same equation for FZ that we had in the blue triangle equations. That's the same. But all we've done is just repeat that for the other equations, the other, the other two uh, components there, FX and FY. Okay. Now let me show you a few tricks up here because there is a few tricks to this. Okay. And here's the tricks. Let's look at vector F2 first, this guy up here. Okay. Because when you get a problem, the very first thing you need to do is you need to look at that problem and say, is that a blue triangle question? 
Or is that a directional cosine question? Okay. How do you know it's a directional cosine question? Because just look at the dimension arrows. That's all you got to do. This dimension arrow goes from the x-axis to vector f. This one goes from the z-axis to vector f. This one goes from the y-axis to vector f. Okay. So that is theta x. That is theta z. That is theta y. How hard is that? You just take those numbers, plug them into there. Now you got your x, y, z, your i, j, k. Man, we can add vectors like nobody's business. Okay. So why is this so hard? What's the what's the trick? Tell me, Dr. Hanson. What's the trick? Here's the trick. Okay. This one up here is given with all three angles. One, two, three. Gave you x, y, and z. Look at f1 though. Dad, gum it f1. They only gave us two. They gave us, look, from the x-axis to the vector is 45, from the y-axis to the vector is 60. Now, Johnny Weeksauce, right? Johnny Weeksauce looks at this problem and he's like, man, I thought x to y was 90 degrees and you're telling me it's 105. Johnny Weeksauce, check it out, man. That 45 degree angle is not in the xy plane. It's in this tilted plane down to the vector, right? Because this vector is going into the floor, right? So I got this vector going downhill like that. So here's the x-axis. So that, that, that 45 degree angle is on like this tilted plane. It's not in the xy plane, okay? So be careful about that. But what the heck, man? Where's theta z? You didn't give me theta z. I don't know. Okay? Here's theta z. You got to remember this little trig identity that goes like this. Cosine squared theta x plus cosine squared theta y plus cosine squared theta z is equal to, drum roll please, it's like a unit vector equation or something, right? One. So here's the dealio. I know theta x is 45. I know theta y. So if I put a 45 in there and I put a, what is it, a 60 in there, okay? And I can get my calculator out and boom, I can get theta z, okay? Now, let's talk about theta z. Theta z, what should it be, okay? Well, you got to understand like where the vector is. This vector is in the quadrant going downhill, right? So theta z from positive z is going to be 90 plus whatever to get down to it. So I know that theta z here needs to be bigger than, bigger than, 90 degrees, right? It needs to be, I don't know, 120-ish degrees, wherever that is, right? This square is going to give you two numbers, okay? Because remember, you get a positive and a negative when you take a square root of something, right? It gives you a positive and a negative. So which one do I use, okay? So this one, I need, I need the theta z that's bigger than 100 because that's where that angle is. I can look at it and I can tell you, okay? So when you use this equation, be careful of this little trick right here, because remember, remember the plus minus for the square root, right? You, you have two roots, so you be careful you get the right one. You get the correct angle that matches. And generally, when they give you this with two uh, angles, they give you these little lines to kind of indicate what quadrant it's in so that you have an idea of which one of these roots is the correct one, okay? So be really careful about that. So on directional cosines, they only have to give you two of the angles because you should be able to come up with a third because you have this equation here at your disposal, okay? And that's really all there is to it. So the, the key is, is recognizing when you see these vectors, these vectors given this way, what am I looking at? Is this a blue triangle or is this a directional cosine? And the easiest way is just look at the dimension lines. If the dimension line goes from the axis to the vector every time, then it's a directional cosine, right? Because I can take a directional cosine vector and add him to a blue triangle vector easy as pi, right? Add the x's to the x's, the y's to the y's, the j's to the j's, resulted done, okay? That, my friends, is the directional cosine equations. They're a little bit easier to remember then the blue triangle equations, because they're all the same. F cos theta, F cos theta, F cos theta, right? They're all the same. So uh, if they ask you, a lot of times they'll ask you, what is the, um, uh, 
what are the what are the directional cosine angles okay so what they're doing there when they ask you that is what is alpha beta gamma what is theta x theta y and theta z well in that case i need this equation right because fx like let's just make up a vector right f equals 100 i hat plus 200 j hat minus 30 k hat right there's a vector right so how would i find that well number one thing i have to do is find my calculator because we're going to find the magnitude of that vector let me find my calculator so so 100 squared plus 200 squared plus or minus rather well plus huh, plus 30 squared square root is 225.6 okay so the magnitude of this vector the magnitude this is vector f of vector f is 225.6 okay so how do i find this well cosine and i'm not going to use theta x i'll use alpha what the heck right is equal to fx what's fx there's fx right there 100 over f which is 225.6 cosine of beta is equal to 200 over 225.6 and cosine of gamma my, my students call gamma dead fish crazy is negative 30 the signs matter the signs matter over 225.6 right so all i got to do is put this in my calculator right 100 divided by 225.6 equals and then inverse uh, cosine right of the answer equals 63.7 degrees so alpha equals 63.7 degrees beta 200 divided by 225.6 inverse cosine that guy is 27.56 beta 27.56 and then finally negative 30 divided by 225.6 whoa ne i did it wrong negative 30 divided by 225.6 equals and then inverse cosine of that gives you 97.64 Okay, gamma. And I knew that was true, right? If I have a negative, negative when I put inverse cosine of a negative number, I'm going to get a number bigger than 90. So that sounds right to me, okay? Okay, so that's all there is to directional cosines. They're easy to remember. They're easy to identify. The only trick is that little trick of roo right there, okay? So you got to remember that equation to be able to solve these. Okay, I hope that helps. We're on to the next video, which is way number three to do 3D vectors, and it's the last one.